we are live. Okay, Neil. Hey everyone, we are just, I'm just trying to set up Instagram real quick. Sorry for the delay today. We got uh, thrown off a little bit by a nice New England snowstorm. Although I guess now it's a sleet and ice storm, so that's always fun. And uh, yeah, some of us didn't uh, remember that it was daylight savings time either. <laughs> All right, so hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a burger bowl. So basically a healthy version of a burger. And it's going to be um, shredded Brussels sprouts. I got these at Wegmans, so it's really convenient that they already came shredded because that saves a lot of time. So I'm going to be cooking them in a skillet. And then I also have tomatoes that I will add to that after. I am also going to do fries, which are baking potatoes. And I'm just going to slice them. <laughs> Run away, potato! Just like this, I'll show you how. And... I also have brown turkey. So first thing I'm gonna do is the potatoes. Um, so I cut up a little bit already and I will show you how I cut them. So you're gonna cut them in half and then cut them in half again. So you're gonna cut them in half three times. What is it? Move the bowl. Move the bowl. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so many cameras. <laughs> Too many cameras. Okay, so you're gonna cut them in half three times. Okay. Wait, cut them in half three times? Oh, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just add them to the bowl. All right. And I did five potatoes. They're about medium size. So cut them in half. One, two, and three. Just like that. All right, so I have all my potatoes cut. Next, I am going to uh, put some olive oil on it. And I also have the oven set to 400 degrees. All right, so you're going to drizzle some olive oil on it. I would say maybe two tablespoons-ish. Sprinkle on some kosher salt. some pepper, and some minced garlic. This is already minced from Trader Joe's. Say maybe about a teaspoon-ish, tablespoon in between. And I'm going to get another bowl, put it on top, and I'm going to shake it. going to spray down a pan with olive oil. Then I'm going to lay out the potatoes. This is a little tedious, but it's to be done. Um, so you're going to cook these for 10 minutes and then you're going to flip them to the other side and cook them for another 10 minutes. After I get them all on here, I'm also going to sprinkle on some Parmesan cheese, which I have been staying away from dairy, but it's just a little bit, so shouldn't be too bad. But what about different types of cheeses? Do you want to talk about that? Ooh. How hard cheeses? Less, yeah. So yeah. Um, hard cheeses have less lactose in it, so uh, people that have lactose intolerant can uh, tolerate it a little bit better. Same goes for yogurt somehow, sometimes, um, and we don't really know why yet. 
about the yogurt, I think. What about uh, what about goat cheeses? Cause I have a friend who's mm. lactose intolerant, and I know she'll oftentimes uh, substitute with goat cheese, yeah. and she says it works out all right for her. Interesting. Yeah. I feel like with dairy, I hear so many different mm. things. Um, mm. Like, it really is up to how you tolerate it. And definitely the quality and the right. source and all that. So, healthy cows make good cheese, or what, happy cows make good cheese? Is that how the commercial goes? Yes. <laughs> All right. Little Sarah Lynn. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm just laying out the potatoes. I'm just going to rinse my hands. All right, so this is what the potatoes look like. All laid out. So now I'm just going to sprinkle on a little more of each, just so you can hit it individually. So again, the oven is on 400, uh, cook for 10, flip, and then cook for another 10. So I'm just going to do a little bit more kosher salt. Oops. <laughs> Not that much. <laughs> just a little bit. And then just a little bit of Parmesan. Just a sprinkle. All right. So oven is ready at 400. Toss it in for 10 minutes. Timer. Set. Okay, next I will do the burger condiments. So that's going to be the shredded Brussels sprouts. There they are again, already shredded. And if you don't have, if you have the whole form of Brussels sprouts, you can either chop them up, you can put them on in a food processor, um, on low, maybe just pulse it, or maybe a blender too. I'm sure that could work. Probably would work best in a food processor, but yeah. I've uh, I've definitely blended vegetables have, in a Yeah, pinch. yeah, yeah, just to get them chopped up. Um, Alright, so I'm going to heat up my skillet first. Heat up. Alright, so I'm just going to put some olive oil in the pan. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask us. Uh, we have a great personal trainer here and a registered dietitian, so any questions you have, they'd be happy to answer as well. Oops. Alright, so I'm going to put this entire bag in the skillet. <laughs> I feel like I already made a Jaws reference in one of our previous episodes, I so I don't so, think yeah. I'll do it again today. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit more on top of olive oil. Do a little bit more kosher salt, just a little bit. Probably put on the sprinkle setting this time. <laughs> <laughs> Not the dump setting. And some pepper. Oh, looks like you got a little helper moving in. Yeah. Oh. Aww. Soda. Okay. And I will do some minced garlic. I absolutely love cooking with garlic. Oh, it's my fave. I mean, besides the health benefits that you can get from garlic, yeah. just it's very aromatic. It's, it's very amazing. flavorful. But, uh, of course, with that in mind, uh, a little bit does go a long way. <laughs> that is true. All right, so I have shredded Brussels sprouts with olive oil, kosher salt, pepper, and minced garlic. And I'm just tossing it around. I just want it to wilt a bit. 
And that's going to be pretty much it for this. So I would say maybe five to ten minutes, depending on how much you have. I have the heat on medium. And Coda is licking the cabinet. Oh. <laughs> licking! You know you're not supposed to let your kids eat paint chips, right? Yeah. <laughs> and she's licking the floor. Oh, Coda. Ah, oh, she's just looking for that floor spice. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just tossing it around, just letting it wilt evenly. Uh, pour it, and then I'm gonna, so when I package it, I'm also going, what is it? Oh yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna slice tomatoes to go with it. And then once I reheat, I'll take out the tomatoes and just heat the rest. So this is wilting a bit. Let's move back. Give it a few more minutes. Ooh, smells really good from here. Yes, that garlic. when she comes to the side. Oh. <laughs> Don't mind us. We're just having little tech conversations in the background. <laughs> All right. For the burger part, I'm going to do ground turkey. Now, this is definitely too much, but I'm going to cook there it all, and I'll probably go. have it for dinner or lunch. And I'm also going to be using uh, Eat Clean Meal Prep Seasoning, and it is tomato basil. So that's a seasoning just for meal prep. Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not. Let's see. It has tomato, garlic, black pepper, basil, coriander, oregano, parsley, and onion. That's my favorite. It's a good one. Alright. So I'm going to heat up the skillet for the meat. Yikes. <laughs> and that's how you clean up the kitchen. Yes. Her last name is Hoover, so she's a Hoover vacuum. Ah. <laughs> All right, this is done. I'm going to mix it a bit and then take it off the heat. All right, so this is heating up. I'm going to put some olive oil on it. Knife. Okay, so like I said, this is too much for five meals, but I'm just going to cook it all because it's the easiest, and I'll either have it for lunch or dinner. Um, a cool tool for ground meat is this tool. Whoa. It smashes it, but I personally don't like it because it gets stuck in these grooves. Yeah. So I'm just going to use a spatula. Hmm. Keep it simple. Didn't know there were any other tools to use besides spatulas. <laughs> I've been living in the Stone Age. Yeah. What is it called? A, I don't know. A masher, maybe? A I'm meat sure. masher. A meat masher. Meat <laughs> separator. <laughs> Well, they actually, um, for for pulled dishes, like pulled pork, pulled chicken, all this, I've seen these before, and the only reason I've seen these before is because a friend of mine loves to find these ridiculous kitchen gadgets. Oh, okay. They look like wolverine claws yeah, that you like put on them. each hand, mm -hmm. and you just kind of like yeah. sh sh shred the meat. It's really cool to watch. when you have a fork because it's so small and tedious. Yeah. It makes sense. All right, so again, I'm doing tomato basil seasoning. And this is by Eat Clean Meal Prep. So put a decent amount on. That's two drops, just a few more, and uh, maybe they'll uh, sponsor us. <laughs> yeah.
by the way, guys, if you were ever curious, um, any of the products that we use, they aren't sponsored. So we're not trying to push products yeah. on you because a company is paying us to. These are just things that we actually love to use ourselves. Yeah, so. I just use them all the time. That's a good point. Yeah, I'm not thinking about it. Although we're getting to the point in society where there may be laws in place soon where if you, you know, talk about a product in your show, you have to state whether or not you're being sponsored or paid. Right? Yes, we're getting there. We are getting there. Yeah. It's funny, I see a lot of people on Instagram now hashtagging ad. Yes, that's that's what it is. That is yeah. exactly what it is. Yeah. They have to they have to now specify yeah, when it's an advertisement. Ad yeah. Oh. Which is unfortunate because you don't want to push ads on people. Well, you know, but like at the same are... time, it's like you you can, as a consumer, it's really there to protect you just so that way you know. You know, you don't look at this product and be like, oh my God, you know, they, they clearly love and use this product. You'd be like, oh, they're being paid to push this product. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, that isn't to bash on people who push products yeah. because there are a lot of really good products out there and marketing is what gets those products out to people, to everybody. Yeah. I mean, if there wasn't somebody out there marketing a product, you'd never even know it had existed unless, you know, you were scouring the internet and falling through endless, uh, what are those, rabbit holes? Yeah, mm -hmm. rabbit holes. Rabbit holes. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. I've always had a very love-hate relationship with marketing. I know, it's yeah. tough. It's tough. Yeah. All right, so that looks like that was 10 minutes for the potatoes. So I'll let this sit. Get a thing for this. Where did I put it? This one right here. Okay, so take the potatoes out and we're gonna flip them. Hmm. And you're just gonna flip them over. You're gonna do like a little uh, somersault in the oh, air. No. I'm gonna flip them. Oh, all right. Ooh, those are some uh, nice looking tongs. Thank you. Both gotta be so old. <laughs> so another trick to get your either veggies or meat or um, starch crispy is to at the end put it on broil, and it just kind of crisps it up. So I may have to do that. It looks like with these guys. You can also pretty. do that if you want to, like, melt cheese or something. Mm -hmm. yep, so, so yeah. you know, I, I've i never heard of that before. That's really cool. What uh, Why is it that setting the oven to broil uh, crisps it up more? Just because it's on a very high heat. Okay. Yeah. So All it right. only kind of cooks the surface first. Gotcha. Yeah. Just absorbs up. a lot of the yeah. moisture. It's kind of like uh, like blasting it with a, with a lot of hot air really quickly. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. So when I do my, these are not working out too hot. <laughs> when I do my chicken thighs, I like to do that, do that at the end. Give them so a little bit of a crispy text. The skin. Ah. Yeah. I bet that would also be a really good technique if you were trying to make like uh, veggie chips. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I definitely know I've made veggie chips before, and the you know they kind of come out a little <laughs> floppy. Yeah, I know it's <laughs> tough to find that. Heat. Yeah, because it's either they're floppy or they're hockey pucks. <laughs> that is it's like I've never been able to find that in between. I'm going to have to try that broiling technique now. Yeah, I think like you should do it for maybe like a minute or two. Oh, no, you're not supposed to do it long. Not yet. even that long. Like yeah, for the meat, I do like five minutes tops. Wow, okay. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know. It works. Works well. Getting them expert cooking tips today. Yes. <laughs> you know, even when you think you know it all or you've heard it all, Someone will still surprise you. Exactly. So I'm just gonna add a little bit to this side, just some pepper. I think I put enough salt. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't want to add a little bit more kosher salt? No, just. All right. Put these guys back in for ten more minutes, and then it looks like I'm gonna have to probably broil. Okay, time. Ten minutes. Alright, so another 10 minutes. Back to my meat. Where is my thing here? So you're just smashing it up and just keep tossing it around just to get all the pink away and cooked. Add more seasoning as you go if you like. It's 
oven is hot. No questions yet. yet. Looks like everybody's just quietly uh, Quiet. watching you watching. cook. All right. Nothing wrong with that, too. I mean, Nothing hey, there's plenty of cooking shows out there. So if you guys are just joining, I'm doing a burger bowl today. It is ground turkey, Brussels sprouts. Um, I guess you can call it steak fries. Yeah, yeah. I'll go with that. Like Potato fries. wedges. Like healthy, yeah, like a healthy steak fry with potato wedges, and yeah. The Brussels sprouts are done, meat is almost done, just waiting on the potatoes. This is actually pretty simple. Hmm. Pretty simple one. If you want also to make a burger, you could even get romaine lettuce and kind of make a sandwich with it, kind of, or do a little wrap. Mm -hmm. the Brussels do like a burger and burrito. And yeah, do that. Or if you want to, you can do a tortilla. Or even a pita. Throw it all in there. Lots of smashing. I mean, I know, uh, I know our viewers on Instagram can't see the top-down camera, but uh, that ground turkey looks real yummy. <laughs> <laughs> so, people on Instagram, we also have a YouTube and a Twitch account. So, we also have a camera coming down from this angle that you can see all my prep station. And if someone wants to post it. I should probably post it on yes. my highlights or something. So let to make me, it, I yeah. will post onto the Instagram the link for our Twitch yeah. and the YouTube. Okay, great. So, uh, real quick. Um, we, d we did already talk about this with the, the cheeses, but somebody on our Twitch channel actually wanted to uh, know about the whole cheese debacle again. Okay. So, what, uh, what really constitutes or goes, like, how do you determine how healthy a cheese is versus how unhealthy a cheese is? How do you determine that? Yeah. So we were talking so about the, hard cheeses, yeah, right? So the two different things about cheese is fat content and probably sodium. I think those are the two mm. things. Yeah. Um, typically, if I'm recommending a cheese, it's going to be Swiss because that's naturally low in both of those. Um, now, is that because it's full of holes? <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's just how it's processed, I guess. Um, yeah, so choosing lower fat cheeses is better for you. And like I said, watch that sodium content too. Okay. I'm trying to think what else. American no. cheese is not. Well, it's like not really cheese either, <laughs> right? <laughs> what about the level of like processed? Level of it being processed. Is there, yeah. Is the cheese that has less, oops, sorry, hold on. That has less lactose, is that less processed? Or is it just that, does that vary? I don't know. I yeah. Don't, I don't know. Just out of curiosity. So I've made mozzarella cheese before, and it's just literally like a gallon of milk and an enzyme and maybe something else. And however it reacts, it makes hmm. cheese. It, like, curdles. And I feel like that's not a lot of processing, but that's a very lactose-dense yep. um, cheese. So, I think so it would maybe vary. it's the more processed. Yeah, I was thinking that the huh. hard cheese might be more processed, but I'm not really? sure. Don't quote me on that, but I think it really does vary. This could be an interesting topic for us to pursue in yeah. a later show. Cheese. Maybe do a maybe do a whole show dedicated dairy. to cheese. We'll uh, make oh dairy. a whole dairy. show on dairy. Yeah. General, tough one. What no, do uh, like some people have don't have the enzymes to break down lactose. Yeah. What do you What do you guys out there think? Would you Would you be interested in watching pretty much a whole show dedicated to dairy and cheeses? Uh, information, misinformation. Maybe we'll even make our own cheese. Ooh. So as you guys are answering that question, um, a little tip too for ground meat is a lot of people drain the uh, liquid 
after it's cooked and that's going to leave it dry. So what I do is I just turn the heat off because it's finished cooking. I'm just going to spread it out and then I'm going to let the liquid um, reabsorb into the meat so it doesn't uh, get dry when you reheat to eat it. All right, so that's all set. Just going to take that off the heat. Both are all set. Rock on. So we're just waiting for the potatoes. I guess I'll cut up some tomatoes. Potatoes. potatoes. <laughs> tomatoes. Huh. <laughs> so is it potato tomato? Oh boy. <laughs> All right. So these are Roma tomatoes. Yeah. Tomatoes have always been one of those very interesting uh, mm. fruits. For me. Yeah. Uh, so, by the way, for those of you playing the home game, um, some vegetables that we consider vegetables are actually fruits. But the biggest thing to understand is that there is a huge difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit, but wisdom is knowing not to put it in a fruit salad. <laughs> yes. But that being said, um, you know, growing up, I never liked tomatoes. I'd watch my family just, like, eat them like apples, putting salt on them and just chunking away. And I could never, I just could never wrap my, my taste buds around the flavor, the texture, nothing. But then much later in life, I discovered cherry and grape tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And there's just something about them. I think uh, it has to do with the flavor profile that I, I actually really do enjoy. I love a good cherry or grape tomato. Mm -hmm. But, you know, something like aroma tomato, I just, mm, really? it just doesn't do it for me. Even if it's sliced? Yep, even if it's sliced. Huh. See, I'm like your parents and I could eat it like an apple, <laughs> but without salt. I could really? seriously just like grab this and just... I don't think I could. Really? <laughs> no, I love I feel tomatoes. like I'm on your side, Dan. Okay. Yeah. My favorite combo, too, is tomato with spinach. Yeah. Hmm. Like Maybe favorite. on a little mozzarella cheese. And then mozzarella, too, <laughs> but I've been, like I said, staying away from dairy a little bit. But. Yeah. But yes, that is a very good combo. <laughs> All right, I guess I'll start packaging those two ingredients into my meals while the potatoes are finishing up. All right. Okay. Well, we can uh, we can start talking about uh, some of the nutrition topics we wanted yeah, to cover sure. today while we're doing that. So, just to uh, get the ball rolling a little bit, when you think nutrition, that word, what does that mean to you? What immediately comes to mind? What are the first three words that you think of when you hear nutrition? Three words. Oh. Hmm. I would Healthy. say, I think Health. of, sorry, I think of cells. Oh, yeah. I think of just fueling cells, like properly fueling cells. Fuel? Yeah. Like that one. Yeah. Okay. So we've got healthy, and health, fuel. Cells. Um... Such a broad life. topic. But yeah, life. <laughs> yeah. It really is. It is a very broad topic. I'm glad that you you brought that point up. We try to simplify such an enormous concept. And I mean, for the digestion of information, simple is better. You know, uh, the famous military uh, acronym, KISS, keep it simple, silly. Well, they don't use silly, but... <laughs> The idea is you want to try to condense information into something that's easily digestible, no pun intended, and something that everybody can understand. But for topics such as nutrition where there really is no beginning and end to it, how do you simplify that? How do you take the most important pieces out of that to mm -hmm. give somebody to go off of from where they want to start? So I always like to start with carbohydrates. And the reason I like to start with carbohydrates is because like other foods in our lives, they've really had their face changed for them over the past two decades. They used to make up the majority of our food pyramid. For those of you uh, who are my age, our age, and older, you probably remember that food pyramid with that huge base at the bottom that was Great. all wheats and grains. Mm -hmm. which are carbohydrates. And to stem off of that, a lot of times when people think about carbohydrates, that's what they think of. They think bread. They think grains, right? 
But carbohydrates are so much more than that. There's so much more to them. The vegetables you eat are carbohydrates. The fruit that you eat are carbohydrates. The breads, the grains, yes, those are carbohydrates too. So that brings me to my next point, is for a while, carbohydrates became demonized. People were like, oh my gosh, carbohydrates are bad for you, or oh, I'm doing that low-carb diet, how about you? And we started to assume and associate that carbs are bad, carbs are bad. When realistically, all that was happening was that there was science that was starting to emerge that showed health benefits of a lower carbohydrate intake or health benefits of a higher protein or a higher fat intake. It had absolutely nothing to do with carbs being bad for you. But sure enough, here we are. Even today, with all the information that's out there, I still have people talk to me when they ask me questions about nutrition and training, like, oh, aren't carbs bad for me? Shouldn't I be avoiding those? That's so annoying. Oh. So what I want to do real quick for you is I want to break down how I understand carbohydrates and how I explain carbohydrates to my clientele and people I talk to. So there's something called the glycemic index. And what this glycemic index is, is it's a scale of zero to 100. And the higher a carbohydrate registers on the glycemic index, the more chemically closer it is to actual sugar than it is not. So what happens when your body consumes carbohydrates and you start to process it, your body's going to turn that food into sugar and use that as energy. That's just, that's the process, that's what happens. So when we eat something that is more closely related to actual sugar, it's a much quicker and easy to use energy source for the body. So for those of you who have uh, kept up with our shows, we talked about sports drinks in our myth busting episode and how those are really good mid activity. Mm -hmm. But when you're not in activity, they're not necessarily the healthiest thing for you. Well, that really stems off of the same thing. This, uh, this comes from that whole, you know, you've got sugar, you ingest it, it's readily available energy, and you can use it. So without diverting too much into that tangent, because we're not myth-busting today, we're talking about nutrition, just nutrition. Uh, foods that are lower on the glycemic index scale tend to be your more uh, fibrous foods. So your vegetables are going to register a lot lower on your glycemic index scale. Um, your sugars, candy bars, they're going to register a lot higher on the glycemic index scale. So being high on the glycemic index scale does not mean that something is bad for you either. Whenever you eat food, your body has an insulin response. And if it's higher on the glycemic index, that's going to cause a much more acute spike in your insulin levels. So when we eat something that's lower on the glycemic index, it tends to cause a more slow, gradual release of insulin hormone. Now, when we're constantly bombarding our body with spikes in insulin, we become resistant to our own insulin. So having that candy bar today, not necessarily bad. You're not going to store a lot of those calories. You're probably going to use most of those. But then if you have another candy bar tomorrow and the day after and the day after, and then suddenly you're having one for a snack after lunch and you know, before dinner and at night and, oh, better have that ice cream in the morning because nothing goes better with my cereal than ice cream. Well, I'm getting a little crazy here, but the idea is when you start to bombard your body with foods that are high on the glycemic index, you become resistant to your own insulin. And there's a couple things that start to happen when you become resistant to your own insulin. One of the big ones is diabetes. And it's a specific kind of diabetes because diabetes one is an autoimmune disease that isn't something that somebody can control. You know, you get affected by that. You know, it's, it's not diet related, diabetes type one. Type two, however, that is one that can be directly influenced by your diet. And when you start to get this, this insulin uh, insensitivity, you're setting yourself up for developing diabetes. And some other uh, issues that tend to happen is when the body isn't quite sure what to do with it, its insulin hormone, it makes it more difficult for you to dictate where the energy in your body is going to go. So suddenly your body wants to store more of that. It wants to hold on to those calories and your metabolism starts to take a very slow yet gradual nosedive. And you get into this, this cycle where you almost can't fix it. You've, you've messed up your sensitivity to your insulin and all of a sudden you think, oh, 
well, I'm gaining weight like crazy. I better cut a whole bunch of calories from my diet. And now you're eating in a tremendous caloric def deficit. And on top of that, your metabolism's already dropping from the insulin se insensitivity. And now it's dropping even more to try and keep up with the fact that you're not ingesting a lot of food. This creates metabolic damage and just, <sighs> please, please, please don't set yourself up for metabolic damage. It is not fun and it is a pain in the butt to reverse. Take your organs one by one. Now, the scariest part, or I guess the weirdest part, is when I work with clientele who have created metabolic damage through this exact same cycle that I've just talked about, the first thing we have to do is increase their calorie intake, which leads to weight loss. And people get re... Oh, I said weight loss, I'm sorry, which leads to weight gain. <laughs> And people get really taken aback by that when I say, hey, you need to eat more food. We got to put some more weight on you. And they're like, but I'm all, I've already got all this weight I'm trying to lose. And this is where I stem into the next point that I really want to drive home. Don't obsess about the number on your scale. It is not an accurate representation of your health. Yes, it's not a completely unimportant number. But in the grand scheme of all these different things that represent how healthy you are as a human being, that is literally one of the least important things that you should be focused on. So to segue from that, there's a lot of low carbohydrate or no carbohydrate diets out there um, that gained a lot of popularity early on. Uh, some that immediately come to mind, the Atkins diet. That was the one that really kind of paved the way and pioneered that whole remove carbs from your diet and here's the health benefits that happen. Well, from there, we started to evolve and learn more. We started to get uh, the paleo diet, uh, lots of different offshoots of that. Uh, eventually, we ended up with the keto diet, yeah. offshoots of that. Yeah. So when someone online says to you, hey, I'm doing this great new diet program. Join up with me and you can lose five pounds in a week. Well, I look at that and knowing what I know, having the information and the knowledge I have about nutrition, weight loss, weight management, weight gain, all that fun stuff, I have to hold my finger up for a second and say, wait a minute, you're telling me that by doing this diet, I can lose five pounds in a week. I believe that, but what am I losing five pounds of? Well, they don't tell you that. They don't specify what the five pounds is you're losing. So what I want to do for you today is I want to blow your mind and explain to you exactly what that five pounds is you're losing. Crazy. Now, what I want to preface this with first is that to lose healthy weight, it takes about a month of consistent dietary change to see a significant weight loss or weight reduction of fat cells. And that typically is about one to two pounds. Generally speaking, a healthy adult can lose one to two pounds of fat mass per month. Now that isn't to say there are people genetically who can lose fat faster or slower, but that's kind of where we're looking at for the ballpark. So when you think about that, oh wow, look at those. Mm-hmm. So when you think about it like that, how the heck are these people losing five pounds in a week? There's no freaking way they're losing five pounds of fat in a single solitary week. Mm -hmm. So here's what's going on. Carbohydrates, believe it or not, retain water. When you have carbohydrates in your system, in your diet, when your body's processing carbohydrates, every single gram you have is going to hold on to about two to three grams of water. Now, I've got some numbers written down here that I'm going to just kind of uh, recite for you guys as we go through. So for every gram of carbohydrates, two to three grams of water is stored. So let's say I'm currently on a diet of 200 grams of carbohydrates. All right, cool. Now I'm going to dramatically reduce that to 50 carbohydrates per day. So that's 150 less carbohydrates I'm ingesting daily. This is... Um, this is typically what you're going to find with those low carb gimmicky diets is that they're going to dramatically reduce your carbohydrate intake to around that benchmark. So 
we're ingesting 150 less grams of carbohydrates per day, which comes out to about 400 to 600 grams of water, or 14 to 21 ounces. So all of a sudden, going on this diet, day one, my body is going to have 14 to 21 less ounces of water inside of it. Now we're going to move on to a week later. So seven days of eating reduced carbohydrates, that's 150 less grams per day, which is eventually going to add up after one week to about 73 to 110 ounces of water that you no longer have inside your body. All right, well, let's convert ounces to pounds for a second. So if you're playing the home game or if you're really good at math, 73 to 110 ounces of water is the same as four and a half to almost seven pounds. Well, hey there, seven days, four and a half to seven pounds of water. All of a sudden, it makes perfect sense. So how do these gimmicky diets make it so you can lose five pounds of weight in one week? Well, congratulations, you have just shed five pounds of water. <laughs> now, I do want to preface that while those gimmicky diets are designed to sell, that is why they say everything the way they say it, that's why they phrase the things the way they say it, they're designed to sell, there are still things about them that make them good and healthy diets to follow. And if you do follow them, you will start to see meaningful weight loss. And when I say meaningful, I mean you start to see the reduction in how much weight you're holding on via fat cells. You will start to see that because here's the thing. You're eating in a caloric deficit typically. If you're following their program, you're probably eating more nutritious, wholesome food. So those two factors right there, a caloric deficit and eating more whole food, you're going to see meaningful weight loss. But that's not what they focus on because they know most people aren't going to care about that. They don't want to lose one to two pounds of fat over the course of a month. They want to see immediate dramatic results. So they focus on what the scale says, five pounds. So again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you that what you just lost with that week of dieting is five pounds of water. <laughs> so now to get into our own marketing, <laughs> this is why I really love our nutrition program and the way it functions and operates. We're not trying to tell you to follow a rigid diet plan and structure. What we're trying to do is we're trying to introduce you to eating in a caloric deficit to eating whole foods, to removing the processed junk and garbage that you bombard your system with and typically tend to create those insulin abnormalities which can lead to the health problems. We're not going to sugarcoat it and say follow this and you're going to lose five pounds in a week, but I mean here's the thing. If you're already ingesting a lot of carbohydrates and you follow the diet plan that we do provide, it does have lower carbohydrate intake. So yeah, if you want to feel really good, you will notice that scale is going to drop a few pounds the first week. But again, how can I drive this point home? Stop stepping on the damn scale. Get rid of it. Ignore it. Just leave it be. It's not doing you any good. It's just giving you something to obsess about. Mm. When you are healthy enough in a mindset to understand your relationship with food, that's when you jump back on the scale. But if you jump on that scale every day and it makes or breaks how the day affects you, yeah. that is a very unhealthy relationship you have with that piece of equipment. And I urge you, please stop using that device. For your own mental health, stop yeah. using it. So <laughs> I hope I didn't uh, drone on too long. Uh, I hope that information that I gave you guys was very uh, educational. I hope you were able to absorb a little bit of it. And I hope I blew your mind a little bit. So now the next time one of those MLM programs pops up on your Facebook feed and says, check out these dramatic results, you can say, oh, nay, nay. I know now what those are from. And I know now that there is a way to get there. Um, other than that, um, do you guys have anything you want to add to what I said? Do you have things that you want to talk about in general involving nutrition? This is Nutritional Awareness Month. Wow. I just want to say that if it's too good to be true, then it is. <laughs> like, in everything in life. Yes, that's so true. There is no easy way for this. You have to put work into it. And if you do put the work into it, you'll see better and results that will last longer. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. You guys said it all. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. 
month. Oh, um, it is National Nutrition Month. Yay! <laughs> yeah. It is. Um, so, yeah. Just in addition to finishing up my meal prep, what I did was I had to broil it. So I did about five minutes on high broil on each side so you can see that they're crispies um, on the ends. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm very excited. It looks delicious. I can show Instagram up closer. Mm-hmm. Yummy. Yummy. Oh, yeah. oh, yes, Lizzie, uh, if you go to our YouTube page or our Twitch channel, you'll absolutely be able to watch an entire rerun of the show. You can jump, skip to parts, all that fun stuff. Um, we'll, uh, we'll drop another link before we end the stream, so that way uh, you can head over there and yes. catch it. Yeah, sure. um, before we wrap up the show, guys, I definitely just wanted to let you know again, if you go on to the Facebook and you look up Better University... We currently do open enrollments. Anybody can join into our Facebook group. Uh, every day we post something new, some new information, uh, challenges to get you thinking, just to get you moving, to get you uh, eating things a little bit uh, better, to just enrich your, your daily life. It's the platform that we use to give all of our information and kind of keep everybody who follows along with us up to date. So you can check us out on the Facebook, Better University. You can follow our live streams on YouTube, Twitch, uh, on Danielle's Instagram as well. Uh, if you head to our website, www.mybetteruniversity.com, uh, we've got a lot of great information up there too. We have our course catalog, which has now gone live. Currently, we only have one course available, which is our Clean and Lean. We've got uh, quite a few people on it right now that are giving us absolutely rave reviews. They're loving the 2.0 version of it. Again, this is our Clean and Lean six-week course. It comes with a meal plan. It comes with uh, a grocery list to help you get through that step. And you've got the daily accountability, and you have access to us, the coaches and the trainers, pretty much at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. um, we will be adding a lot more courses in the future to come. Uh, one of the big ones that I'm working on right now is my Fitlosophy course. Um, I don't want to give away too much right now. I will, I will leak little bits of it as we move forward, but... I'm really hoping it's going to provide you with an educational platform to completely reevaluate how you go about your fitness, to change the mindset. So yeah, lots of awesome things to come. As always, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Mm -hmm. uh, Danielle, thank you for being such an awesome meal prep chef oh, and yeah. being our face on the camera. Victoria, thank you so much for being our brains behind the operation. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you guys have any uh, last-minute questions before we go? We want to announce our next oh. week. Oh, my gosh. I almost <laughs> completely forgot. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> so, guys, we do have a really, really awesome announcement. We're going to be starting a subscription service. And what we're going to be providing with this subscription service is every week we will give you a meal prep guide and a grocery list for the meal that we're going to be cooking on Sunday. So um, for $5 a month, you're going to get that every single Monday following the Sunday show for the following Sunday meal prep. So what you'll be able to do is do your grocery shopping, and then you can uh, come right along and you can cook along with the show, or you can watch the recording after we've finished recording it, so that way you've got a little bit more power to kind of stop, play, go. And uh, yeah, you'll have your own little kitchen assistant as you move through your own meal preps for the week. So we don't uh, we don't have any links for that right now. It's set up through a uh, a different service. So if you are interested in the subscription service, drop us a DM on any of our Instagrams, any of our Facebooks. Uh, send us an email. We'll give you some more information and tell you how you can uh, pursue that if it's something you're interested in. But great. I think that's our show. Awesome. All right. That's it. Have a great Sunday, everybody. All right. Bye, guys. Yeah.